Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Ready Tech and in this video, I'll be showing you the most important tips and tricks for your Redmi Note 7. So guys, here's the phone and in this video, I'll be just talking about the tips and tricks. If you want to know about all the features offered by this phone, check out my video on the best features. Link will be in the description. Now, the first thing that I want to show you is the full screen gestures. Now, Xiaomi or MIUI or Redmi phones have the best gestures on Android. So to enable them, just go to settings and scroll down a bit and then select full screen display. Now select this option that says full screen gestures. Now once you select the gestures, make sure you enable this particular toggle. Now once you're done, you can swipe up from the center to go home, swipe and hold for recent apps and you can swipe left or right from the edges to go back. Now you can also swipe and hold to switch between the current application and the previous application. Now as you can see, Google is my first application and behind that we have settings. So if I swipe and hold, I can switch to settings instantly. Now this is a very unique feature that's available only on Xiaomi phones. Now if you're using the gestures and want to trigger Google Assistant, we can do it using the power button. To do that, go to settings, then select additional settings. Now select buttons and scroll down and enable this toggle. Now once you enable this toggle, you can press the power button like half a second to trigger Google Assistant. You can press and hold it for three seconds for power options, that's to power off and restart. And you can press and hold it indefinitely to restart the phone. So these are the new gestures. Now going back to the camera application, this is a sample picture. Now every time you take a picture, you will get this watermark right out of the box. And if you don't like it and if you want to remove that, you need to go to the camera settings and disable this toggle. Next, we also have this toggle that says fingerprint shutter. Now once you enable it, you can take pictures and stop video recording using the fingerprint scanner. So to take any picture, just Touch the fingerprint scanner and it'll take a picture. Now to start or stop video recording, once again you can touch to start recording and touch it again to stop it. Now if you're like me who doesn't like all the camera shutter sounds and all, you can also disable it from settings. Just go to settings and then disable this toggle. You won't hear any shutter sound or camera sounds while you're using the camera application. Now we also have a new feature called night mode and here it is. So if you're taking pictures in low lighting conditions, use this mode to take better pictures. Now going on next, I'll show you how you can use split screen mode. Now if you are using these gestures and if you want to use split screen mode, you can go to the recent apps page, press and hold on any of the application and then click this button to open that application in the top window and then you can select the secondary application from the list below. Now, if you're using these regular buttons, normally you should be able to press and hold the recent tabs button to open or start split screen mode, but that doesn't work on this phone. To make it work, this is what you need to do. Go to settings, then select additional settings. From here, scroll and select buttons. Now select open split screen, then select long press menu button. Now, once you do that, you can press and hold the recent tabs button to open the current application in the split screen mode and then do the same. Now for the secondary application, you can select from the list over here or else you can go to the home screen and then select any of the applications from here. Now sometimes there are applications that still do not support split screen mode, like this phone dialer. So if you want to use all applications in the split screen mode, this is what you need to do. First we need to enable developer options. For that, go to settings, then select about phone. Now click on the MIUI version number 7 times. Once you do that, developer options will be enabled. Now go back, scroll down and select additional settings. Then scroll down once again and select developer options. Scroll to the bottom and then enable force activities to be resizable. Now once you do that, restart your phone and you should be able to use all applications in the split screen mode. Now for some quick shortcuts, if you want to display memory usage on the recent apps page, this is what you need to do. Go to settings, then select home screen and shortcuts. From here, enable this toggle. Once you do that, in the recent apps page, you can see the memory usage at the top right corner. Now similarly, if you want to see the battery percentage and the network usage on the status bar, you need to go to settings, then select notification and status bar. To display the network usage on the status bar, enable this toggle, show connection speed. And to display battery percentage, select battery indicator, then select percentage. Now if you also want to show the notification icons on the status bar, enable this toggle. Now once you do that, you will be able to see the notification icons on the status bar. Now going on next, I'll show you how you can block advertisements from all the Xiaomi applications. So let's say you're using any application like file manager and you're seeing some ads on this application. Then open that application and then go to settings. And in the settings page hidden somewhere you will find recommendations. Just disable it, then you will not see advertisements from this application. 
In the same way, we can block advertisements from other Xiaomi applications like Xiaomi's music player, video player and so on. So this is the Xiaomi music app and just go to settings then select additional settings. Now disable receive recommendations. Now going on next, this phone has a feature called Game Booster which improves your gaming experience by blocking all the annoying notifications, enabling down disturb mode and so on. So to use that feature open the security application then scroll down a bit and then select game speed booster. Now this is the app interface. From here you can add all your games and from here you can tweak all these settings. So once you open this game all these settings will be applied automatically. The games connection will be prioritized, background sync will be disabled, network auto switch will be disabled and it also clears the cache and you can also enable do not disturb mode. So you can do all these things. Now besides that once you open any game in the list like this you will see a small floating button on the top left corner or the top right corner. And once you click it, you get additional options. You can start video recording, take a screenshot, clear the RAM or even block all the banner notifications. And if you click it over here, it will switch to the right side. Just like that. So that's the game booster. Definitely give it a try. Now going on next, if you want to record calls automatically on your phone, open the phone dialer, go to menu and then select call recording and enable this toggle. Once you do that, you will be able to record all the calls automatically on your phone. If you don't want to see any notification about call recording, disable this toggle. Now if you go a step back, you also have something called incoming call settings. Now these are all some pretty cool features. First we have flip to silence ringer. If you enable it, every time you get a call, you can flip your phone to silence it. Next we have quiet ringer when lifted. So once you enable this feature, let's say your phone is on a flat surface and it's ringing, you can lift it up to make it silent. It just makes the phone less annoying. In the same way we have all these features, definitely give them a try. Now going on next, I'll show you how to take a screenshot. Now to take a screenshot on any Android phone, you can press the volume down and power button both at the same time. Once you do that, your phone will take a screenshot. Now if that's a bit hard for you, you can also use the toggles. Just press that toggle and your phone will take a screenshot. And finally, we also have the three finger screenshot. You can simply swipe down using three fingers to take a screenshot. Now this feature, the three finger screenshot is enabled by default. But for some reason, if it's not working for you, you need to enable it from here. Go to settings, then select additional settings, then select buttons. Now select take screenshot and select the first option. Once you do that, you can take a screenshot by simply swiping down using three fingers. Next, if you want to take a longer screenshot, first take a normal screenshot. You can either use the buttons or even use the gesture. And once you do that, you'll see a small preview on the top right corner. Just click that. Now select scroll. Once you do that, the page will be automatically scrolled and you'll get a longer screenshot. If you're done or if you're satisfied, you can click the done button in between to stop the scrolling. Now you get a longer screenshot. Now this is the default launcher on the Redmi Note 7. As usual, there is no app draw. But if you want an app draw, you can definitely try out the Poco launcher. You can download it from the Play Store. Just search for Poco and you can find the Poco launcher. Now, even after installing the launcher, sometimes it might not be set as your default launcher. So to change your default launcher, this is what you need to do. Go to settings, then select home screen shortcuts. Now select default launcher. From here, you can set Poco launcher as your default launcher. Now, whenever you press the home button, it'll take you to the Poco launcher. There we go. This is the app draw and these are all your applications. And these are the home screens. Now, in the same way, if you want to change your default gallery application, phone dialer, messaging application and so on, this is what you need to do. Go to settings, then select installed apps. And then select the menu button on the top right corner. Then select default apps. From here, you can change your default camera application, default gallery app, default email application and so on. Now going on next, I'll show you how to quickly open the camera application using the power button. So to enable that, go to settings, then select additional settings, click buttons, select launch camera. For the shortcut, we are going to use double press the power button. Now once you do that, you can click the power button twice to open the camera application anywhere, anytime. So as you can see, when the phone was unlocked, it worked. And even when the phone is locked, it works. Even on the lock screen, it works. So that's the camera application. Now this phone has a feature called wallpaper carousel. So every time on the lock screen, wallpaper changes and you can swipe left or right to change the wallpaper. Now, if you don't like this feature and if you want to disable it, this is what you need to do. Go to settings, then select lock screen settings, select wallpaper carousel and disable it. For some reason, if you like this feature and if you want to enable this feature, do the same, just enable this toggle and you can enable it and you can further tweak these settings to get the best lock screen wallpapers. Now going on next, if you're someone who uses face unlock feature a lot, 
I suggest you to enable double tap to wake and raise to wake features from display settings. Now you can double tap the screen to wake it up, your phone sees your face and immediately unlocks the phone. Now once you have enabled raise to wake feature, you can simply raise your phone, display lights up, sees your face and once again unlocks the phone. So if you are using face unlock feature enabling these two features, raise to wake and double tap to wake really gives you a much more immersive experience while unlocking the phone. Now finally, if you want to end calls using power button, usually I set it off for my father and mother. So if you want to enable that feature, go to settings, then select additional settings, then select accessibility, scroll down a bit and enable power button end calls. Once you enable this toggle, you can end calls using the power button. This is really handy for elder people who always forget to end calls or have a hard time to click that red button. So guys, these are the most important tips and tricks for your Redmi Note 7. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video and definitely check out my video on the best features to know about all the features offered by this phone. So guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you're planning to buy this phone, please use the link in the description. It always helps the channel. And if you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off. Have a nice day.